everyone. <laughs> Thank you for joining us. We're going to talk about living with alligators today. Just a reminder, I'm Shannon, and I'm the Natural Resources and Conservation Extension Agent in Polk County. But before we get started, we have the excellent um, disclaimer, which means it's going to be a good webinar, right? So basically, I just want you all to realize that Lara and I are extension agents, and our job is outreach and education. We're going to be talking about alligators, which at times can be a very hot topic, um, can be controversial, and can involve people's safety and health. So just a reminder that as UF IFAS extension agents, we do not regulate or create policy, and we do not enforce existing regulations. If you have any specific questions about management policies, trapper policies, nuisance alligator programs, or are concerned about the safety of you, your family, your neighbors, et cetera, please reach out to Florida Fish and Wildlife Conservation Commission. Uh, the phone number here on your screen, FWC Gator, that is specific to the nuisance alligator program, but on their website, myfwc.com, you can find the contact information for your local office, or if you have any trouble finding it, definitely reach out to Lara or I, and I can get you uh, that information on how to contact your local office. So just a reminder, we're here just to share information. Thank you for joining us. Okay, so today we're gonna talk about some common alligator myths. We're gonna talk a little bit about biology, species information, diet, behavior, things like that. And then the most important part of all of our Wildlife Wednesday webinars are the discussion about recommended coexistence strategies. So the purpose of our Wildlife Wednesday webinars is just to help everyone in Florida or our visitors to Florida um, understand and learn a bit about Florida's ecosystems and the wildlife that live there. Okay, so first we're going to have a poll question. Lara, if you could pull that up for me. And in case you don't get the poll up, I'm gonna put it on the screen. The question is true or false, you should run in a zigzag pattern to escape an alligator that might be chasing you. Everyone could please vote in the poll question. We would much appreciate it. Okay, let's give it just a couple more seconds. Some of you might be thinking very hard and just hoping you won't have to escape an alligator. I also hope you never have to do. All right, Lara, I think that's probably everyone that is going to participate. Yeah. You want me to share? Yeah, go ahead and share. Okay, so as you can see, we had a mixed bag here. Um, the answer is actually false. So this is one of our very common alligator myths. And I'm going to go ahead and stop sharing and close the poll question. If the question stays open on your page, just go ahead and close it out. Um, first, it's going to be very rare to be chased by an alligator. I'm not um, known for just attacking people out on land and running after them. Um, but second, if this does happen, you just want to run as fast as you can. Uh, run in a straight pattern, zigzag is only going to slow you down, and he's not going to follow you in a zigzag pattern. He's just going to run after you. So they're very quick on land and in water. Um, we'll talk a little bit more about that later, but just run away from the charge. It's not going to be a long marathon run that the alligator will do after you. Um, just get away as fast as you can. Don't bother with a zigzag. The next myth we're going to talk about is alligators have poor eyesight. Um, alligators actually have very good eyesight and their predatory pattern is primarily based off of eyesight. So they can see really well. Um, if you think about the shape of an alligator's head, the eyes are on top of it so that it can um, rest under the water, but their eyes will stick up above the water. So alligators have great eyesight, um, yeah, but it does persist as a common myth that they can't see very well. The next one is that alligators are poor climbers. Uh, it's surprising to a lot of our visitors and even our residents that alligators can actually climb very well, uh, especially when they're young. They can climb up in the shrubs. Uh, they'll climb over anything that impedes their way. We're going to watch a quick video about this, but this does decline with size as the alligator gets up there in length and in weight. Their climbing ability 
do uh, decline. But I'm hoping this video will work. Essentially, what that video is showing is an alligator that's probably about uh, four to six feet in length, uh, probably closer to six feet, climbing over a four foot chain link fence. He's not exactly graceful about it, but you can tell he knows what he's doing. He went right up over that fence. So alligators can climb, and it is a wonderful video. Okay, so next we're going to talk about alligators as a species. This is their common or their scientific binomial, the alligator. Mississippi nesses. <laughs> um, they can live anywhere there is fresh water. There's a saying in Florida that if there's water, there could be an alligator living in it. And I would say that that is absolutely accurate there. Uh, it doesn't need to be a large lake or river system. We have seasonal ponds and wetlands all over Florida. I've come across them in the middle of the woods when they're walking to and from different pond systems. Uh, anywhere there is water, you can find an alligator in Florida. To be on the safe side, assume that there could be an alligator. Alligators exist everywhere from South Carolina and North Carolina, west to Texas and north to Arkansas. We have the largest populations in Florida, Georgia, and Louisiana. Uh, nice and warm down here, and we have a lot of water in those three states as well. Alligators are considered a keystone species. They are critically important to Florida's ecosystems. They are one of our apex predators that help keep small mammals and fish populations healthy. Um, they also, what's the best way to describe this? Alligators will manipulate their habitat. So for instance, in the Everglades, the alligators will wallow uh, much like a hog would and it will actually dig a gator hole down into the mud. And when the drought or the dry season comes on and the water starts to recede, these gator holes will be the only place that have water in some seasons. And that creates habitat for amphibians and fish. And having that large animal that can create those wetland areas or deeper areas within wetland systems is really important to our other wildlife. And it's time for another poll question. So Lara, if you would pull up poll question number two, please. The question is, what is the current status of the American alligator? Your options are species of special concern, federally threatened, federally threatened due to similarity of appearance, federally endangered, or not currently listed. If you could get People let us please fill out your poll questions. That would be lovely. See people switching their question answers back and forth. Give you a hint, go back to your first thought, some of you. Okay, Lara, that's probably pretty good. Thank you so much. So the majority of people got this question wrong. The answer is actually that alligators are federally threatened due to similarity of appearance. They look very much like the American crocodile, which is listed as an endangered species. So the alligator itself populations have recovered. It is not listed as an endangered species on its own. It is just listed because it is or I'm sorry, because it has a similarity of appearance. Okay, so I'm going to stop sharing those results. Okay, so as I said, it is threatened due to similarity of appearance to the American crocodile. It provides federal protection of the species, but does allow for state approved management activities. In the state of Florida, what that means is we have an alligator. So state law prohibits the general public and um, well, everyone in the state, visitors and everyone, uh, from killing, harassing, and possessing alligators. This includes their eggs and their young, unless you have the appropriate permit to hunt alligators during the specified time the FWC opens gator hunting season. This is a very complex process. It involves a lottery that you can apply for to get an alligator hunting permit. 
and your harvest needs to be reported back to the state. This is one of the ways that they keep track of population size and individual size and distribution across the state. Lara is going to push out a link in your chat if you are interested in alligator harvesting permits. Uh, Florida Fish and Wildlife has a website dedicated to this. And if you have any questions on how the harvest works, how they determine how many lottery uh, permits to give out, go ahead and contact FWC. There's a lot of information on that website. So they'll be able to share that with you as well. But for now, we're going to move on and talk a little bit more about the size of alligators. So in general, females will not grow to be larger than 10 feet, but males can get larger. We say in general because I like to say that there are not any hard and fast rules when it comes to nature. Um, they're gonna, nature is gonna do what it wants to do. So this is just a general guideline. It's one of the better ways to tell if you're looking at a male or female alligator. If it's much larger than say nine or 10 feet, you're probably looking at a male. Um, Alligators that are less than four feet in length are generally not considered a threat to people or pets. Uh, they just eat tiny little things. And the mere presence of an alligator is not cause for concern. Uh, you might wanna be concerned about an alligator if it approaches you, or if it comes up to you and looks like it's wanting food, likely means that it has been fed before. So record size, people are always interested in this. The record alligator in length was from Brevard County was 14 feet, three and a half inches. That is a monster gator. It was a really, really big boy. And the record weight was actually a smaller alligator. He was only 13 feet, I believe, if memory serves correct, but he was over a thousand pounds. As a big, healthy gator, uh, he had no problem finding enough prey. And that one was up in Alachua County. Typically, you're gonna see alligators that are much smaller, I would say most of the alligators that I see on the day-to-day -day are probably in the six to eight foot range. So from that, it's gonna be very hard to know if they're male or female, but for all intents and purposes, it doesn't really matter. It doesn't affect behavior, it doesn't much, it doesn't affect behavior much, and it doesn't affect the weight. So again, alligators less than four feet are usually not considered a threat to humans or pets. In rare instance, they may be a cause for concern, and you can always talk to FWC about that. Okay, so diet. I'm gonna keep this fairly vague and broad because this is a lunchtime webinar. Don't worry, there will not be any images and I will not get too graphic in my description. But the important things to know about alligators are that they're opportunistic feeders in that they are going to eat the things they can catch the easiest tends to be smaller prey. It is dependent on alligator size as to what they consider easy prey. Um, they primarily hunt between dusk and dawn and prey selection, as I said, it's mainly based on size. Um, a lot of alligators are actively hunting right at dusk and dawn, so it's really important to keep yourself and your pets away from water at that time, especially if you know there are alligators, especially large alligators, in the water near you. Their usual prey consists of fish, frogs, turtles, snakes, small mammals, other alligators. There's a lot of cannibalism in the alligator world. Um, if you think about it, when they get really big, the only thing they really need to be concerned about are other alligators or people. So that does happen. They can take a deer or a hog if they find them unsuspectingly near water. And keep in mind, a lot of these critters are the same size or bigger than most family pets. So especially small pets, you're gonna to wanna to keep them away from the water. If you like to walk around a lake to walk them, that is totally okay, but keep them on a short leash, keep them out of the shallow water, do it in the middle of the day if you can, and try not to create any kind of pattern. Don't go out walking near adorable small puppies right next to the water's edge every day at 6, 6 a.m. Um, they can recognize patterns after a while, and so you don't wanna give them that easy opportunity. How fast is an alligator? Well, there's no definitive answer for how fast they can swim. Uh, crocodiles have been clocked at 10 miles per hour, which is pretty dang fast. Um, I want everyone to think about it. Can I swim faster than 10 miles per hour? Well, I know I certainly can't. I might have learned to swim when I was just a, a wee little baby, but 
Michael Phelps swims at six miles per hour. So I know for a fact that I do not swim at anywhere near six miles per hour, let alone 10 miles per hour. So alligators are extraordinarily fast in the water. That's why they have those large muscular tails. That's how they propel themselves through the water. We talked earlier about running across uh, land and they can only really sprint for short distances. But as you can see with this picture, when they elevate themselves up off the ground, they have pretty good ground clearance and they will run if they need to. Uh, alligators have been clocked at seven and a half to nine miles per hour. I personally can't run that fast. I know some people can. Um, most, most dogs can outrun an alligator if given the opportunity and over short distances, uh, human sprinters can as well. And not just the super fast ones. So if you find yourself in the really unusual situation where an alligator is charging at you, just sprint away as fast as you can. Okay, again, I'm gonna keep this very vague, uh, but as far as hunting, they tend to swallow their prey whole, especially underwater. Um, they've got this really fabulous throat um, mechanism that allows them to swallow those, uh, those prey items whole. If the item is too large to swallow whole, they will stash it underwater under a log or something of that nature. And they're just gonna wait for it to soften. If you think about the way an alligator's uh, jaw is and you picture that iconic open gator mouth and the teeth, if you think about your own mouth, we have molars. Molars are for chewing and grinding. Alligators don't have that. Their teeth are made for holding prey when they snap shut and for ripping. And so they need to wait for um, large prey to soften up a bit. And I promise that's as detailed as I'm gonna get there, but you can use your imagination. Okay, so let's talk about mating season, which is always an important thing for people visiting Florida and people who live in Florida to know. Mating season, roughly speaking, is May to June. It can certainly start with courtship in April. And, um, but mating, mating typically occurs in May and June. This will always depend on the weather that particular year. Do we have a really cold winter? Did it warm up really early? There's all sorts of factors to think about, but this is the time of year when males are gonna be on the move. So you're likely to see them in between water bodies. Younger males are gonna be looking for territory, looking for females. And this is the time you wanna be extra careful about um, keeping an eye out for alligators and making sure that you're not in their way. Alligators become sexually mature around six or seven feet. It is generally um, size dependent. So a female alligator may take 10 to 15 years to get to that size. It will depend on the ecosystem that she's in and how much prey is available. A male could take eight to 12 years to reach this length. So in general, the males will reach maturity before the females but it, it happens around six or seven feet. The female alligator after mating will build and defend that nest until hatching. This is another opportunity for conflict when it comes to coexisting with alligators. If you have an alligator that you know is building a nest, it's very wise of you to stay away from that area. You will be warned with aggressive behavior that could be hissing. Um, there could be some charges involved especially if you live in an area with a lot of lakes like I do, we know that there are certain stormwater pipes that they like to be near, certain wetland areas. They tend to stay in their little area when they're gonna build a nest. So there are um, alligator mothers that will build nests in the same place year after year, given the opportunity if they don't have a large pot of hatchlings, um, but they will defend that nest and it is their prime instinct at that time. So avoid threatening them or being perceived as a threat to them or their nest. They will protect the hatchlings after they, um, after they hatch as well. And we're gonna try another video here. So what you see this alligator on the, on the screen doing, he's bellowing. And this is his little water dance and he makes a really cool noise when he does it. And this is both a territorial noise and also a call out to show the ladies what he's worth. So let's try and get another video. Okay, this one looks like it's gonna work.
Very cool. So I will say I'm a little uncomfortable with how close this person got to the alligator to get this video, but that noise that he made, um, very guttural. They don't really have vocal cords, so it's just a noise that they make with their throat. And then that water dance can be heard and felt the vibrations for quite a long ways. That video is also available easily on YouTube. You can Google gator bellowing Haynes Prairie to find that one. So about nesting, nesting tends to happen in June or July, and your female alligators tend to lay 30 to 50 eggs per clutch. Incubation time is about 65 days. It depends a lot on the weather and exactly how uh, the nest is built, but approximately 65 days. And hatching will usually occur mid-August through September. Uh, approximately a third of alligator nests are destroyed by predators. These are typically raccoons. They can also be destroyed by flooding if we get a lot of rain. Um, hatchlings emit a really cute yerping noise. And they do this right before hatching. It, it syncs them up so they all kind of hatch at the same time. And it lets the mother alligator know that they're emerging. She'll go over there and she'll unbury the nest and help them escape. And then she will protect them for a year or more, a couple of years, it depends on the individual. Approximately 70% of the eggs are uh, thought to hatch on average. And as I said, a third to 50% of nests will uh, survive all the way to hatching. Okay, now we're gonna move on to the coexisting with alligators part of this talk. We are nearing the end of the presentation. So if you had a question that you've been holding in, please go, uh, go ahead and open up your chat box and send it over to Lara so she can gather those for me. The big thing we wanna talk about with alligators is never feeding them. This includes marshmallows. I don't know why they're so popular, but there are a lot of um, stories and pictures and videos that I get sent. Please don't feed alligators chicken. Please don't feed alligators marshmallows. Don't feed alligators anything at all. What happens is they learn to associate people with food and that's when you get that bad alligator behavior I described, the alligator coming towards you. They're looking for food and eventually they will assume you are the food if you have been giving food. It is a bad idea and it is also illegal in the state of Florida to feed an alligator. If you know of an area that is feeding alligators, I recommend letting SWC know because it creates a dangerous situation for you, your family, and your neighbors when this is going on. The one thing that people tend to forget about when we're talking about feeding alligators is fish scraps. So let's say you've gone fishing and you're, you've gotten uh, some catfish and you're really excited to have them for dinner. You decide you're gonna fillet it right there and uh, take the parts of the fish that you wanna keep with you and throw the scraps back in the water this is still considered feeding alligators. It still accustoms them to getting food when they come near people. So what we're asking people to do is please put your fish scraps in the garbage can. Almost every boat ramp that I've ever been to has a trash can. Please put your fish bits in there. Uh, same thing with marinas and parks. And if you've got your own house and you're fishing, you absolutely don't want an alligator to start associating your backyard with fish scraps. So please throw your fish scraps in the, in the trash, not in the water. I will say this also works in salt water. You don't want to attract any of the salt water predators either. You want to avoid swimming, uh, especially in areas where large alligators are known to be between um, dusk and dawn and with your dog. So, on FWC's website, it says specifically to avoid swimming in areas that are not designated for swimming. For a lot of people in Central Florida that live on the waterfront, be it a river or a lake, they swim off their dock. If you know there are large alligators that have been hanging around, be aware of it and consider not swimming there. Um, you really want to avoid swimming with dogs though. And the reason for that is dogs act like prey. They swim around, they make a lot of splashing with their four legs, um, and they're prey sized, a lot of them. So swimming with your dog is a dangerous habit to get into. It is recommended that you do not do that, especially if, you're, if you are gonna swim um, 
in an undesignated private area. Just take these things into consideration. As you can see in this lovely photograph taken, I believe, in Gainesville, um, alligators will bask right on the water's edge. And this is how they warm up, they thermoregulate. Um, you might be hiking right past them. They tend to be pretty shy and they might jump in the water when you get real close to them. But if they're just laying there, just let them be. Alligators have a general demeanor of being pretty lazy. Um, they have a reputation for just sitting there and watching the world go by as they warm up in the sun, take little cat naps on the, on the water banks there. Uh, just be cognizant that they might be there. Make sure that you're always aware and looking around. This is especially true if you have pets uh, with you or if you have young children with you. Keep them very close to you to avoid problems with them. And you wanna exercise this caution anytime you're doing recreation in an area that might have large alligators. But one that gets forgotten a lot is if you're working near the water's edge. So if you're doing a native plant uh, restoration project on the lakefront, make sure there's more than one person and look around, have eyes on the water at all times. Alligators are very stealthy when they wanna be. They are typically shy of humans and do not wanna come near them. But if they've already become a habituated to people's food, they could be dangerous. So make sure that if you're walking or working near the water's edge or in the water, that you've got a few groups of people and that someone is always watching and can alert, alert people if, um, if need be. We have one more poll question. Mara, if you could pull that up for me. The question is, what should you do if you are concerned about a nuisance alligator? Your options are call Shannon, just let it be, kill it, feed it since it's already used to people, or call the FWC nuisance alligator hotline. We'll get just a couple more people to respond. Excellent. Okay, there, I'm not seeing a whole lot change there. Everyone got it right. Good job, good job team. Uh, the answer, please don't call me. If you're concerned about an alligator, that's a safety threat. Please call FWC's Nuisance Alligator Hotline if you are very concerned about an alligator. If you just have general alligator questions, feel free to give me a call or shoot me an email. Um, but if you are concerned about the safety of you, your pets, or your neighbors, Please call FWC and talk about it with them. Okay. So with that, we're gonna talk very briefly about what the statewide nuisance alligator program is. This is a program operated by Florida Fish and Wildlife Conservation Commission. And typically a nuisance alligator is an alligator at least four foot in length. And that is believed to pose a threat to people, pets or property pretty straightforward. If you feel uncomfortable with an alligator's behavior, uh, you suspect it's been fed, or just generally you don't like the way how it's approaching you, your children, your pets, it's clearly displaying that it is not afraid of you, that is reason for concern. And if that happens, you should call the Nuisance Alligator Hotline. Um, when you call this phone number, FWC will talk to you about it, talk to you about your concerns, your location, Make sure that the tracker that they send out will have access to the property and be allowed to be on the property. If it's a communal property like an HOA pond or an apartment building complex, they will need permission from the landowner before they can go out there. You can contact them two ways. You can call 866-FWC-GATOR, which in telephone numbers is on your screen, or you can go to myfwc.com slash gator for more information on this program. Something that you should be aware of, if you call this phone number, the nuisance alligators are killed. They are not relocated. At this point, you need to consider that it is a problem gator. It is a dangerous alligator that they're coming out to get. Those are the ones that we call about. As I said before, simply seeing an alligator in the wild, it should be something that's considered a privilege. If it's exhibiting good behavior, if it swims away when you get close to it, those are all good gators. But if they're exhibiting bad behavior and it could be a threat, definitely call the Nuisance Alligator Hotline. Okay, and that's all I have for you today.
I hope you have all enjoyed this very much. I'm going to turn control back over to Lara so that she can facilitate the session. And thank you.